I'm Taylor. You are at the Reputation Secret Session. So now here we are, and this is a secret session, and what I would like to do is explain to you how important secret sessions are to me. The reason we decided to do them again is because the secret session people from 1989 were so wonderful, and they became friends, and they would go to shows together, and they kept the secrets that were unveiled to them in this <laughs> session, and they... They really made it possible for me to like trust massive groups of people because they taught me that if you trust people, then maybe those people will show you that respect back and the trust is kind of a two-way street. And I'm so excited and I'm so happy you decided to come. <laughs> so thank you for coming to my house. So with this album, uh, the first song is a song called Ready For It that's already out. Um, We're not ready and for it. And so... Basically, ready for it is like, it kind of introduces a metaphor that you may, um, hear more of throughout the rest of the album, which is like this, like kind of crime and punishment yeah. metaphor, um, where it talks about like robbers and thieves and heists and all that. And, uh, I found that to be a really interesting metaphor, but twisted in different ways throughout the album. The way that it's presented in ready for it is, um, Basically, like, finding your partner in crime, and it's like, oh, my God, we're the same. We're the same. Oh, my God. <laughs> Let's rob banks together. This is great. And you will hear that kind of theme carried on throughout the rest of the record, but not exactly in the same way as you heard it and Ready For It. I feel like I should start by saying that, like, this group of producers is a lot smaller than it was on 1989. I picked people who I worked with on 1989, but I felt like they would be versatile enough to kill 1989 and make something new. <laughs> there would be no way for me to make something even similar to 1989 and have it be effective. It had to be completely different because that album was its own thing. It was just in two groups. It was me and Jack Antonoff and me, Max Martin, and Shellback. So it's just such a good, solid group. And basically... This was the first song where Max and I felt like we'd really done something different than 1989. We were like, we were like, oh, that is all right. Okay. This song is called I Did Something Bad. And I wrote this song on piano. It's not going to sound like it, though. You're not going to say that after you hear it. It's not that kind of song. So I brought it into them and I was trying to explain the production. I had had a weird dream and I'd woken up with this. <laughs> You're like, here we go again. <laughs> I'd woken up with this sound in my head that was like this, like, it was a sound that was so, so hooky and so catchy that I knew it had to be in a song because it was that annoying. It was like, it wouldn't stop going around in my head. And the sound was, and then it was like, duh, 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 bruh. Yeah, absolutely. It'll always get your attention. Like after the chorus, that's what I want to hear. But I don't want it to be my voice. I want it to be an instrument. What instrument is that? So I was like playing the voice memo to Max and he's like, oh no, there's not like an instrument that can do that. <laughs> he's like, but what we can do is we can take your voice doing it and pitch it down so that it sounds like an enchantress slash a dude. <laughs> And so, so that's what you're hearing after the chorus. But, um, anyway, <laughs> this is called I Did Something Bad. And this is when we first kind of knew we might be onto something with the album. So next we have track five. Yeah. I didn't even do it on purpose, but when I, when I put out the track list and when I, when I finally like was like, Oh, this is the final track list. I was like, Oh, I did it again. I did it again. Track five is kind of a legendary, not, not legendary. That's ridiculous. Yes, amongst us, amongst us. Like, oh, I know I'm going to like track five. Like track five's the emotional vulnerable song. Um, anyway, so this is a song called Delicate. There's like an effect that you may hear on the vocals throughout the rest of the album that is recurring and it's a vocoder. And, um, what is that you say? It's, it's, um, it's a vocal effect where you sing and the vocoder splits your voice into chords and you can play your chords on a, your voice on a keyboard in chords. 
So be, basically, if you're like singing the notes of a piano and you could play your own voice. So that's what you'll hear in the beginning and throughout this song. And then you'll hear it several times. We, we tried it in the studio and I thought it sounded really emotional and really vulnerable and really kind of like sad, but beautiful. This is a song that like the idea of your reputation is, um, is definitely something that I play on for the entire album. But when the album starts off, it's much more bombastic. It's more like, Oh, I don't care about what you say about me. I don't care what you say about my reputation. It doesn't matter. Blah. Like, but, but like, then it hits this point on track five where it's like, Oh God, what happens when you meet somebody that you really want in your life? And then you start worrying about what they've heard before they met you. And you start to wonder, like, could something fake, like your reputation, affect something real, like somebody getting to know you? And you start to wonder, um, how much does all that matter? And this is the first point of vulnerability in the record where you're like, oh, maybe this does actually matter a little bit. Um, and how does that factor in kind of questioning the reality and the perception of a reputation and what that actually, how much weight it actually has. So this is called Delicate. So the next song is Look What You Made Me Do. And with Look, Look What You Made Me Do, it, um, it actually started with just like a poem that I wrote about my feelings. And it's basically about like realizing that you couldn't trust certain people, but realizing you appreciate the people you can trust. Um, realizing that you can't just let everyone in, but the ones you can let in, you need to cherish. And it had like all the verses in it, just basically as is. When the beat hit, we were like, Ooh, look what you made me do. Look what you made me do. And we were just like, oh my God. Like, we've got to like edit out the rest of the words and just do that. Um, so, um, I would just like to play the most important part of the song. Bad dreams, I don't trust nobody and nobody trusts me. I'll be the actress starring in your bad dreams. I can't the ball right now. Very excited because that just went number one on pop radio. The next song is called King of My Heart. And like, okay, so one thing about the, the Ready For It video that you saw, which you may not have picked up on because you weren't freeze framing every single thing of the video, but, um, yeah, in a lot of the scenes, there will be like lyrics from the album that no one's heard yet graffitied on the walls. So I saw you guys pick up on like, yeah, I, I saw you pick up on like they're burning all the witches. So that was one of them. But there's, there's also like a bunch of like hearts with crowns on them. For the song King of My Heart. And basically this song, um, I think it's really interesting when people talk about their love stories, right? Like when you guys like vlog about like this, me and my husband, me and my boyfriend, like, or just anybody, anybody talking about how they fell in love. Like there seem to be these definitive phases, like whether, and it doesn't matter how long that phase lasts. There seems to be like a moment when you knew it transitioned to the next phase. People will be like, Oh my God, we were friends for six years. And then there was this moment and we knew and then it changed. Then there was a moment and it got even deeper. And then there was a moment and we knew, or like I saw this person and then there was this moment and we knew everybody has a different story with how they connect with someone else. And what I find interesting are the moments where it switches because you always hope that that switch is going to move you forward and not backward because it can happen both ways. It could happen either way. So this is, I always wanted to structure a song where each individual section of the song sounded like a move forward in the relationship. And so I, and, but still being listenable, you know, like, so I wanted like, I wanted like the verse to seem like its own phase of a relationship, the pre-chorus to sound like its own phase of a relationship and the chorus to sound like its own phase of a relationship. And I wanted them to all have their own identity, but seem like they were getting deeper and more fast paced as the song went on. So finally I was able to achieve that in a song. This is a song called Dress. This song was one of those things where like almost every line is like something that I came up with like a year before. And then like when I was writing the song, I just like cherry picked and I was like, like that, like that, like that, like that. And I was really proud of the hook of this because it sounds like a pickup line. 
And yet it is a love song about deep and tender feelings. The next song on the album is, it's about when people take nice things for granted, like friendship or like trusting people or being open or whatever, like letting people in on your life, trusting people, respect, all that. Those are all really nice things. And so this is a song called This Is Why We Can't Have Nice Things. I was hoping you would say that. That's great. <laughs> the way I feel the album is, as far as a storyline, is I feel like it starts with just like getting out any kind of like rebellion or anger, or angst or whatever. And then like falling in love and realizing that you kind of settle into like what your priorities are and like your life changes, but you welcome it because it's something that matters to you. And this last part of the album feels like settling into where I am now. So it's, it kind of started with where I was when I started making the album and ends with kind of my, my emotional state now. And this song, I think really reflects that probably the best on the album. Um, and it's called call it what you want. We threw a big like New Year's party in London this year. And, um, I was thinking about how everybody like talks and thinks about who you kiss at midnight, right? Like it's this big romantic idea of like, who are you going to kiss at midnight? Like ring in the new year. And I think that is very romantic, but I think there's something even more romantic about who's going to deal with you on new year's day. <laughs> who's willing to like give you Advil and help you clean up the house. <laughs> I think that like states more of a permanence. Um, and so I was thinking about that and I wrote this song called New Year's Day. Oh, oh, there are two lines in this song that I'd been saving for a really long time for the right moment. And I just like picked them for this song and I'm really excited about them. And the first one is, please don't ever become a stranger whose laugh I could recognize anywhere. And the other one is, hold on to the memories, they will hold on to you. Thank you so much for listening. Bye, guys.